for this video, for this training, I will measure the systolic pressure on my thumb instead of on the great toe. The sisto comes with two cuffs, the occlusion cuff and the sensor cuff. The occlusion cuff stops the blood flow. The sensor cuff empties the tip of the toe. It pushes the blood away. When the tip of the toe is emptied, it's easier for the sensor to detect the return of the blood flow. The occlusion cuff is placed on the base of the thumb as low as possible, like this. Well, on the base, as low as possible on the thumb. Let's place now the sensor. The sensor must be stuck on toe. Whether it is maintained by the sensor cuff or not. So, to stick the sensor, just take a double sided uh, sticky tape. Stick the tape on the sensor, like this, press around the sticker, then stick the tongue, this tongue, stick it on the side of the sensor, and then remove the protective part, like this. The double-sided tape is on the sensor. And just we have to stick the sensor like this on the toe and adjust the sensor cuff. Please note that the cable, the sensor cable, must go downwards. It must not go upwards. If it goes upwards, it is likely to pull the sensor away from the toe. And in this case, the cysto is likely to collect parasite. To switch on the Sisto, click on this key. A message is displayed. It gives information on the charge of the battery. That is here 100 person. Charge the battery only when it is flat. If the battery is charged more than necessary, it will be damaged. It may happen that the battery is completely flat as you have a measurement to perform. In this case, connect the Sisto to the charger, perform the measurement, and then leave the Sisto connected to the charger for roughly three hours. Indeed, the complete charge of the Sisto lasts roughly three hours. The initial signal can be pulse, as it is the case here, or it can be completely flat. It doesn't matter. Before during a measurement, it is possible to input the patient's arm pressure. To do that, click on brachial pressure key here, 
let's consider a pressure of 120 and click on return. Now let's start the measurement, clicking on start. The sensor cuff is inflated. Pressure is maintained over three seconds. Now it is the occlusion cuff that is inflated. The sensor cuff is deflated already. And the occlusion cuff is being deflated slowly and steadily. The signal is flat. It is normal. The signal can be decreasing. It will be normal. But when the signal keeps increasing from the beginning of the measurement, we may have some doubts on the quality of the occlusion. When the blood comes back, the signal goes up, as it is the case now. We can see the signal going up. When the increase of the signal is large, as it is the case here, we can stop the measurement. No need to wait for the complete deflation of the occlusion cuff. So now, let's stop. The blinking marker indicates where systolic pressure is measured. Blinking marker must be placed at the beginning of the increase, at the foot of the increase. When the blinking marker is not well positioned, it is the responsibility of the user to move the marker with these arrows. In this case, we can move a little the marker. Let me do that. Okay, it is better positioned here. Well, just before the increase. And when the marker is well positioned, we can click on Valid. Toe pressure is displayed as brachial pressure was input previously. It is displayed too, as well as toe brachial index. If the user need to input brachial pressure, it's possible from this screen by clicking on this star key here. Let's input a new brachial pressure. I click on start. Let me input 125. Return. So we can see the brachial pressure is updated as well as TBI. To do a new measurement, you have just to click on new. Let me do that again. New. And let's start a new measurement. Inflation of the sensor cuff. Inflation of the occlusion cuff. Deflation of the sensor cuff. And now, the occlusion cuff is being deflated slowly and steadily. The signal is flat. It's normal. It can be decreasing. It will be normal. But when the signal keeps increasing from the beginning of the measurement, we may have some doubts about the quality of the occlusion. When the blood comes back, the signal goes up. Let's see here. We can see the signal goes up. When the increase of the signal is large enough, as it is the case here, there is no need to wait for the complete deflation of the occlusion cuff. The measurement can be stopped. Let's stop the measurement. The blinking markers the blinking marker indicates where pressure is measured. It must be positioned just at the beginning of the increase. If the marker is not well positioned, it must be moved with these two arrows. When the position of the marker is satisfying, just click on Valid and Toe Pressure is displayed. 
arm pressure is displayed because it was input before and TBI is displayed too. Some patients may have toe with a strange uh, shape and uh, because of the shape of the toe, the sensor cuff may slide away from the toe during its inflation. To prevent the cuff from sliding away the toe during the inflation, you can gently place your finger over the sensor cuff during its inflation. Now, let's consider the case of short toes. In the case of a short toe, it may be impossible to place both cuffs. When it's impossible to place both cuffs, the sensor cuff has to be removed, like this. And the sensor is maintained on the toe only thanks to the double-sided sticky tape. It is the user who is going to replace the sensor cuff. The user will have to push away blood, like this. The user has to press sensor and toe, exactly like this, strongly. Release the pressure. Press on the sensor and on the toe. But this compression has to be performed at a very specific time. Now, let's consider the mode selection for long or normal toes where the pressure measurement is performed with two cuffs with the occlusion cuff and with the sensor cuff, the mode must be automatic. For short toe, where the measurement is performed only with the occlusion cuff, the mode must be semi-automatic. For the mode selection, press on this key, on the mode key. To start the measurement, you have to press on start key and then follow the displayed message. Now, let's recap what happens with a short toe or when mode is semi-automatic. Press start to start the measurement and then follow the instruction. Press start. I have to press strongly on the toe. Okay, press to start. And I have to press until I can hear the beep. No message. I can release the pressure. And now, the measurement proceeds the same way as for the normal toe, as for the automatic mode. No difference. We are waiting for the increase of the signal. Now the signal is going to increase. It means that the blood flow has returned. Okay, there is an increase of the signal. The increase is important. We can stop the deflation of the occlusion cuff. Again, there is a blinking marker. We have to check 
its position. Its position is correct just at the beginning of the increase and we can validate the measurement. Toe pressure, 87 millimeter of mercury. When the measurement is over, the cuffs and the sensor must be cleaned. To clean the cuffs and the sensor, you can use this kind of wipe. So let's take a wipe. Just clean the cuffs like this. Second cuff and then the sensor. Before cleaning the sensor, of course, the double-sided tape must be removed. Before concluding this training, I have to point out three recommendations. First one, the patient must be in the supine position. The patient must be well flat on the examination table. If the patient's heart is higher than the toe, the toe pressure is likely to be overestimated. Second recommendation. The patient must rest for 10 minutes before the measurement. Last recommendation. The patient's feet must not be cold because of low external temperature. If the feet are cold, they must be warmed up before the measurement. Otherwise, the pressure is likely to be underestimated. The training on the operation of the CISTO is now over. If you should have any question, feel free to contact us directly. It will be a pleasure for us to help you. You can find our contact information on the documents enclosed with the CISTO or on the CISTO box. Thank you for your attention.